Greetings, Cosmeteers, and welcome back to the Dapper One, which, as per the last episode, in between episodes, I gave it a fresh lick of paint, and I am really starting to like the theme that we've got going on right now. I'm starting to uh, get into the groove of using the uh, the uh, game's uh, decal system, so I've got a couple of interesting things going on. I think we're going to get better with that as time goes forward. But uh, before we get down to the nitty-gritty of today's episode, I want to give a massive thank you to everyone who has taken the time to drop in comments whether name suggestions or tips for how we should proceed and especially building tips in particular you have been an enormous help and we will see some of those comments getting implemented in today's episode but uh, finally i want to give a big thank you to everyone who's taken the time to boop those lovely buttons down below the video it really does make a lot of difference now the big question I'm sure that is uh, on everyone's lips is, are we going to be going more industrial or more fleet? Well, in general, I would say by and large, people were more interested in seeing the industrial potential of the game. However, there were some really, really standout comments that, that made some very solid arguments in favor of not simply tackling the industry by adding ever more systems onto our current ship because we're already starting to f uh, fight with space we've got a lot of storage on this ostensibly warship and the fact that we're trying to make a ship that does a little bit of everything while that is very very tempting and is quite often how i go in from the depths i'm not i'm, I'm not going to paint it as anything that it is a dime awful for that in from the depths but it it does there is a certain appeal to having ships with a very defined goal. Those sorts of designs tend to be able to do what they do a lot better. It's, it's the whole idea of use the right tool for the job, not just the, the, the an approximate tool. Screwing in screws is undeniably easier with a screwdriver than just bashing it in with a hammer, as much as the, the latter is quite fun to do. Uh, that being said, we may do a bit of a hybrid. Um, that is to say, I think we are going to try and build a, a second ship, but it is going to be a dedicated hauler as the kind of foundation for our, our industrial fleet. Something that can carry around a lot of storage so that we can cut back on that and the space required to have it on our warship, which will allow us to tighten this build even further. And hopefully then we'll be able to base that into mining ships and salvaging rigs and so on and so forth. But before we get down to building the new ship, we're going to start things off by addressing some of the comments regarding our current design before we jump into anything new. And the first thing on the list of uh, chores, uh, a lot of people commented on this, but uh, we'll call one of you out, uh, Keith Clark. Uh, as m along with many, and really I can't stress this enough, many others suggested that uh, perhaps we should pop down a... Uh, another aiming prism at the prow of our ship rather than just relying on the kind of the central prism And I think that's a pretty solid idea. However, we don't have a spare crystal and they are unfortunately extremely expensive So uh, we're going to shed a bit of our wealth as much as I don't want to do that I'm going to get rid of that processor there and we're gonna buy ourselves a spare prism There we go. Let's uh, allow our crew and you know what I'm gonna help out a little bit by moving the ship a bit closer so that uh, uh, the transfer crew can uh, do that job a little bit easier. Now, the idea behind this change is currently, while this prism can aim a little, it's got a very narrow field of fire. It's a tiny, tiny little field of fire out from the ship. Almost comparable to just a straight up ion beam emitter. If we were to place uh, an aiming prism at the front, then we could use that as the turret, and if that should get destroyed, which is the fear for these prisms, then we can still fall back on the fact that we do have the central prism. So we won't completely lose our, we our weapon system, we will just um, decrease its ability to aim with, with a significant angle. So we'll have to be a little bit more precise in how we steer our ship, which isn't really that much of a problem. That being said, this is not something we really want to throw away. This isn't a disposable component. It's a really, really expensive one. It's five grand to build these. So we don't want to be, uh, you know, completely callous with how we use them. Uh, another comment uh, was that these structural parts, while we can shoot over them without our weapons ever interacting, enemies don't don't. It's, if we have a look at uh, information here, does it actually tell us? No, it doesn't. But effectively, 
they are components with a very, very low um, resistance to penetration. So a shot will hit them, but it'll probably penetrate several of them and do a little bit of damage to the things behind them. But that might be enough to, to give us the longevity we need on the Iron Prism. Now, of course, there is a concern of this exploding. Um, simply because the more energy going through it, and it's going to have two ion prisms going, uh, sorry, ion beams going through it, it might explode uh, reasonably large, but it is encased in armor around here, so I'm hopeful that this isn't going to harm our shield. Make it so. Now, the first thing we do after that, we need to make sure that this is linked up properly, so this is always trying to aim. Now, we're going to have to remember that when... Oh, well, I, I'm going to say when, not if. When this gets destroyed in some battle in the future, I need to double check that this defaults to just being an aiming crystal and isn't trying to still aim at a crystal that no longer exists. That's never firing. We'll have to we'll have to check that one out going forward. Oh, I just uh, realized we could actually tidy up that design a little bit over there while it does perhaps weaken the overall thing. Again, it's never not fashion souls. There you go. That looks much, much better, in my opinion. So there we go, Keith. We'll uh, see how this goes. Uh, there were a couple of people who cautioned against doing this because of the explos explosive nature of these crystals, but I'm willing to, for science, this one. I don't think we're we're at too much risk of losing um, anything functional down here, but again, it's going to be for sciencing how big these explode based on how much power is going through them. Now, with that done, the next and probably one of the biggest uh, comments uh, well, rather, most important comms that we've got is regarding energy flow, crew flow, and crew roles. This is going to be a bit of an ongoing uh, iterative process, so we're probably not going to get everything perfect with just the, the amendments I'm going to make now, or even in this episode. It's going to be something that we'll revisit a lot. But uh, thanks go out to Corbold, who very kind of gave a slew of general tips and suggestions uh, for ship design, but drew special attention to crew efficiency and how managing roles and travel times could drastically lower the amount of crew needed to man a ship. Uh, also to Hans Lind for pointing out the fact that crew moving through rooms like we've got down here, they move at 50% of their speed. Actually, a couple of people mentioned this as well. Uh, and that effectively you only ever really want your crew moving down a corridor or over a people mover to the place they want to be. You never want them having to go through other rooms first because they are very slow. Even in the rooms that are operating, they are slow. And that's something that I didn't pay proper attention to before. So we'll also be changing that. And then echoing these po points in general were many other viewers, seriously so many of you that it would be a video all of its own just to list the names so i hope you'll forgive me for summarizing all of those comments together uh in general take a, the the takeaway from it was that uh a guide for power and crew requirements so this these guides they are egregiously generous with proper management of the flow and the the number of resources that you've got it will dramatically improve efficiency, meaning that we can do a lot more with less. These are probably guides just put there so that if you hit these guides, even if your ship is you know, horribly inefficient, it's still going to work. So, you know, it seems like a part of the game of Cosmetia is managing your resources, not just the ship battles, not just building the ships, but making sure that things are moving around within the ship at the, at the, in the right way. But you can just kind of brute force that problem, like you could brute force many problems, uh, you know, referencing back to the screw and the hammer kind of scenario. But given all of that, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to try and sh sort out at least the, uh, the energy problem first. We'll come back to the crew in a little bit. Now, the way you can do that is you can come in here, you can select supply chain mode, and now let's just make sure mirror mode is on. I'm going to say that the power for all of these, one of the things that we saw uh, in the previous episode is crew member grabbing stuff from over there and then marching it over to this side. I don't think that they were taking power from one capacitor to put into the other. I think they were taking power from this capacitor to load it into the uh, engine room. And just as bad, honestly. Uh, so we're going to do this. We're going to select you, right click. Now this generator and only this, uh, sorry, reactor is going to power this, 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 and this. So these are already no longer going to ever try and pull power from down here, which is good because they shouldn't. Uh, we're also going to have you bring power directly down to this capacitor. Now at this point, that's it. These reactors can give power to nothing else down here. And instead, these are all going to draw power from the capacity. Yes, I know they've got to cross, uh, cross that, but hopefully that's not going to use power too uh, frequently. Oops, sorry, I meant to uh, do that. Uh, hopefully that's not going to draw power too frequently. Uh, you really shouldn't be powering these. There we go. So this is only going to load power into the engine room. 
only into the uh, cockpit, the two point defenses, and the shields. Now that should already drastically improve the speed that energy is moving around because they're not going to make any unnecessary trips from this reactor somewhere else. The energy should just be flowing straight down here whenever it's needed and then this should be fanning out to where we want it next. And finally, with a bit of a necessary redesign, especially of our storage spaces, which kind of ties into what we want to do, I have updated the ship's rolls. Now, this took me quite a lot of time, so I'm just going to cut out all of that, and I'll give you a summary here of the changes I made. So we've got logistics over here. This is going to be our default role, because I feel like someone who's responsible of just loading the batteries and loading the, the resources, you're never not going to be okay with someone doing that. Uh, engineering, specifically, are going to be running the engines, and that's pretty much all they do, but they'll also kind of help out with industrial uh, works. Gunnery, weapons, that's it. Navigation, Navigation, that's it. But in detail, logistics are prioritizing loading up the energy to things in the priority that I want them running with. So for example, defenses tend to get a, a, a very high priority. Also fire extinguishers, they are going to be working on fire extinguishers as well. Cockpits, again, because if that goes down for any reason, the whole ship is basically blind and stops doing stuff. So it's, it, you know, it's as important as the defenses, frankly. Uh, but other things like engine rooms, and then I prioritize the thrusters based on how important I, I feel they are. Same with weapons, the, the big, you know, uh, the, the primary weapons get the lion's share of the power, and then it gets filtered out to other things. They're also responsible for gathering things, general stuff like that. They they don't have very many very low priorities. Um, again, though, in, in industry, uh, I prioritize um, things that are building ammo that we might want to use in the future but by and large they're, they're kind of middle of the road for most stuff except operation they really don't prioritize operation but they will do it in a pinch if there is a space available there shouldn't ever be however uh the engineering again pretty much the same thing they will help out with uh, defenses a little bit because i kind of felt that that was probably under their purview as well but uh as you can see they don't really supply energy to thrusters but they will work the engine room and also the hyperdrive. I do have, like, if it's um, providing power to the thing that they're operating, so for engineers, I guess, thrusters kind of cover that, they've got a middling priority, but then on everything else, it's just they'll do it if there's no one else to do it and it needs to be done. But once again, um, they try to focus on their role. Uh, I'm kind of... Uh, but, but midway, really. Maybe I should have them working the mining laser rather than gunnery. Should gunnery work the mining laser? Ah, you know what? We'll we'll go with the engineers. Get to get to do a little bit of pew pew as well. So uh, on that note, uh, we're immediately going to go over to the uh, mining laser pew pew. And we're going to turn that off. They no longer care about that one at all. That's engineers will load the the batteries for the mining lasers. But uh, pretty much the same idea for for the weapons crew as well. I give them priority to operate the weapons based on how important the weapon is going to be. Flak battery gets a very high priority. But then otherwise they just load batteries as, as a kind of middling priority. And then they don't really uh, take care of anything else. They will help out with the point defense system because I do feel that that's kind of under their purview as well. Uh, nothing in pretty much anything else until we get right to the end. We're I say they, they are in charge of running the tractor beam, because I, if I install a tractor beam, more than likely I'm going to be using it offensively, not uh, not defensively or in terms of industry. I'm going to be using it to try and spin enemy ships out of their correct alignment and make life hard for them and easy for us. And then navigation, pretty much the same thing. All ones across the board until you start getting to the cockpits, and I've got them in prioritizing the larger cockpit uh, down to the smaller because I feel that that makes a lot more sense and ultimately I also give them uh, the job of running the sensor array. Currently though I've moved our crew around so you'll also notice that we now actually have all of the roles and uh, I've moved two little bunks next to the cockpit to minimize the amount of travel time required for them. They are just more or less there. What I want to see is one person or, or two people depending on our crew complement idle in the specialized bunks at all times because if they're not, 
I've got more people in these jobs than are needed to operate the jobs. So if I don't see spares, then it means that they are loading energy and I need more people in charge of logistics. So by having a, a little bit more than I need, it also gives me a visual warning that maybe something's wrong with my crew setup. But uh, logistics should be the ones that are always busying uh, around the colony, uh, around, the, around the ship like a colony of ants, whereas uh, the other specialist roles do their, their uh, duties. We are now ready to get out there and uh, get up to some mischief. Now, there's a couple of places we want to go. Uh, one of them, though, is over in this direction. So, finally, let's get out there, get some materials together, though I imagine the main thing I'm looking for right now is going to be uh, fissiles and hypercalls and maybe some, some processors so we can afford to build a bridge. Now then, what have we got over here? We've got several over here things. Oh, okay, we've got a lot of over here things. All right, so a lot of stuff just kicked off at once. Uh, fair enough. We've got a hyper jump beacon. This actually ties into a point that I was given. Uh, who was it? Uh, Adrian Mosselin. I hope I said your name right. I suspect I said it wrong, but I gave it a try anyway. Hopefully I get some points for that. But you pointed out that hyper drives can be used within the system to hop between stations and the, the hyper jump beacons. I assumed that these were just the entry points from external systems because the last time I played hyperdrives really were only used for jumping between two systems but apparently you can use them like quick uh, quick travel within a system that is fantastic news and I will try and employ that another point actually in regards uh, while we're out here on the map uh, who was it? It was uh, Zelakratz. Again, I suspect I've said your name wrong. I do apologize. Uh, but you suggested that we can avoid rediscovering pirate bases by dropping down map markers. What a fantastic idea that is. Um, we know that this one is a pirate base. Or, or rather, I suspect it is. Uh, I haven't got eyes on the base itself, so I'll just pop that down as a question mark. And I believe this was the other one as well. But uh, yeah, it, it rang particularly true when you said rediscovering pirate base because I did that like four times. Uh, I think I cut most of it out, but uh, I, I revisited this pirate base in particular like so many times during the last episode. Right, okay, so the next thing is we've got a bit of a fight, which is good. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, mysterious things to have a look at. In fact, let's... Uh, oh, no, you're both coming over here. Okay, fair enough. We'll have a, have a little bit of a fight then, shall we? Now... As much as all of the amazing comments have helped me redesign the ship, and I think we've made a much more efficient ship, there was one comment in particular that stood out. Oh my lord, this is going to save me so much time. You're not even going to be aware of how much time this saves me because I usually cut it out. But every time we engage, I have to draw back our like uh, standoff distance because this ship is built around keeping the enemy at arm's length while pelting it with uh, very big rocks, or in our case, superheated rocks that uh, form a stream that travels at the speed of light. Uh, the analogy broke down, but never mind. Uh, we can apparently save this. Ghosty9967985, most honored of your name. Thank you so much. This is going to save me so much time. I can now do that, then down here, and save attack defaults. Uh, just to go over the, the tooltip again, saves the current attack, oh, saves the current attack distance and orientation as the new default to use for the selected ship. So now on, whenever I click on a ship, we will try to take up this default position. You've no idea how much time that's gonna save me. Right, with that done, and since your cockpit is right at the front, let's uh, go ahead and melt that off, shall we? There we go, and we should immediately start blasting backwards to try and put some distance between us. Let's have a look at how this uh, aiming crystal is doing its job. I mean, right now we're more or less keeping uh, keeping eyes on it. I think we may have taken you out. Yes, we have. So immediately reprioritize target, please. Let's uh, switch over. We are taking some disruptor fire, dislike, because they go through shields. Now let's disable this shield, but you notice how they are really trying to go through this armor here because they're trying to prioritize taking out my reactor. It's not really what I want them to do, but in a way that works to our advantage because it means that they waste some time uh, taking shots at something they're not going to be able to hit while ignoring the extremely, extremely vulnerable crystal at the prow of the ship. So I'm actually all right with that. Okay, you know what though? We stripped the other one apart, but I'm thinking this is basically a finished ship. The only thing it lacks is a cockpit. I think we're going to mark this one as a wreck. Oops, that was a wrong button. It's Control-M to drop a map marker. 
We'll come back to you if I don't get a better ship to replace. Which one is the most dangerous? Renegade, Danger 3, Tri-Raptor. Dislike your disruptor, so let's pop those first and then we'll go for the bridge. But, ooh, if, ooh you're going to be a tricky one to grab. But uh, we've already knocked out both of the disruptors. Those are the most uh, worrying parts of this ship, honestly. I don't care about the rest of it. We should be able to uh, get through there. The other one is uh, being kept at arm's length. Right, let's uh, approach and engage. I would like to see... Let's see if we can't specifically go for processes only. There's nothing. In fact, I could just disable and then turn on processes alone. Let's see. Do you have a processor on this ship that I can grab? You do not. Very sad. No, nothing over there either. Something over here? No. Okay. Well, we're going to have to go and buy some processors then. Uh, I do have enough materials. All we're really taking damage right now is armor. But I'm going to go buy two processors and, and haul... Uh, materials back and forth. We're not going to need the fissiles that we've got because that wreck is basically uh, good to go. And the same with this one. We've got a lot of stuff to sell. So give me just a moment and we're going to grab a, the newest member of our fleet. And we're back just as an enemy shows up. Ah, they can be over there. It should be fine. Okay, so whilst uh, cleaning up all of the wrecks, we managed to uh, do a little bit of good trading. I have got quite a few more processes than I need. There are also a decent amount of hypercalls. I'm not exactly sure how many hypercalls we're going to need to build the bridge. In fact, I could have easily checked. Let me go and do that now. Uh, we need 14 hypercalls. So we've got a fair few more than we, we need in total. But I've got a, got a reason to, to be stockpiling hypercalls that we'll get to in just a moment. Right, now... As long as we've got a, an airlock, which we should have right there, we can transfer crew. I topped up the crew complement on the Dapper one, just so that we could do this. Uh, the uh, Pekka, Peccadillo. Hmm, okay. Uh, we're going to move over. Do I really need six crew over there? Either way, let's, let's transfer them over. That should bring the Peccadillo online. Now, if we have a quick look... I can repair some of it. In fact, I can repair all of it to its current standard. So let's just go ahead with that. There we go. We've just invested an awful lot of money, but we do now have a functional ship. It's just not functional in the way that we want it to be. Now, we do have a couple of uh, materials available nearby, but not enough for us to really do too much with this ship right now. Am I going to put weapons on our primarily carrier or just give it point defense? It shouldn't be getting into any fights, so I feel that just point defense would be enough. Give me a moment. We're going to make a nice, uh, well, a, a small hauler. Okay, we are up here in the uh, scrapyard, or rather the, uh, the ship graveyard, because we need more parts. Because this is going to be the Dapper 2. All of these locations will eventually have maximum size storages, and we could even extend it out further. But I think this is a good place for an initial design. All I want is to be able to change the hull and add one storage, and I will consider this ship functional. Uh, we've got the bridge at the front, a crew quarters, a reactor. We've got people transporters, a, uh, a capacitor down here, and then a couple of engines. I'm hoping we won't need more than six crew. If we do, then I can easily fit some more crew down here uh, for some engineering purposes. But uh, this will rely only on having some point defense on the sides because honestly it shouldn't be near any fights. Maybe I'll add some point defense right at the, the rear as well because it really shouldn't be pointing at a fight no matter what. It should be trying to escape from a fight and, and shooting down incoming uh, incoming munitions as they go. But uh, yes, the, uh, the double one. <laughs> is having to have a couple of extra storages added in order to uh, facilitate this, which is ironic considering that's the only thing I want to build on the other ship. But, you know, here we go. It's going to take me a little bit. We've purchased all of the necessary uh, advanced components. So, for example, the uh, processors, the hypercalls, the fissiles that are going to be needed. And we're slowly, ever so slowly, creeping through this graveyard, grabbing all of the rest of the materials we're going to need. And I will bring you back when it's time to uh, metamorphose the Dapper 2 into the freighter that it is in its heart. All right, with a belly full of materials and having to come back here to do a little bit of a trade, finally, for some coils, we are ready to make this happen. Uh, will we be able to afford to pop in the cargo space already? One would hope. Let's uh, just pop one in for now. Yes, it'll cost me a little bit, but not too terribly much. Yes, we can actually afford to get two of them Straight up and run it. Make it so, please, and thank you. Oh, my lord. Finally, the Dapper 2 is, in fact, a freighter. Now, 
Unfortunately, because I've only got one crew quarters, uh, they're not really going to prioritize running the bridge. Uh, so I kind of need to, to give that the priority job. So let's pop that and then they, they will do everything else, but uh, they will mostly run the bridge. Oh, uh, it would help if I gave them a door. Uh, they will run the bridge once there's a door. There we go. <laughs> right, crack on then. Uh, also, it looks like uh, Symmetry wasn't playing nicely with me earlier. Let me just uh, pop that one in there as well. We don't need that door, though. That one can go. Make sure that everything else is hooked up. Yes, it does look like it is. And there we are. Okay, we've got everything running. We've got our freighter. Marvellous. Now, to add new components in, we'll simply cost uh, plates. So we can just go back to the uh, graveyard to get those. Also, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, let's get rid of all of this nonsense on the back of the ship. <laughs> on the plus side, that does mean that we should be able to immediately add a couple of these in. One there, for example. One here as well. Would this cost me something? Nope. And will this cost me anything? No. All right, our freighter is fully equipped. Now, it doesn't have much of a crew to uh, grab items, so it's going to be a little bit of a potch, that one. But uh, we do have a couple of people on board. Uh, I think six crew is fine for now. Uh, in the meanwhile, I think we will head back and grab... Oh, well, I've got to pop a little bit of extra plating here on the back, but I'm really, really happy with the ship that we've got. Now, you may notice that I have picked up a couple of things here and there, odds and sods, and that is for a reason. <laughs> I was teased so horribly that I, I made a priority of getting the scanner and then I have a built-a scanner. Well, there was a reason for that. Uh, now, that we're going to need to increase our command points because sadly, we're actually low of the command points we're going to need to be able to run this. However, we can make some of the changes straight away. So we're going to pop that in there. I'm going to pop a little bit of a uh, protection up top. And then we are going to mark in the space that we're going to need for this scanner. So scanner and the larger bridge section will go there. Let's go ahead and make that so. Nope, I need to turn that around. Sorry about that. There we go. Make it so. And this will be designated for the command crew. We are going to need more command crew. Uh, basically, so let's grab everything we just dropped. Hopefully, no, can we not grab it all? That is most curious. Maybe I need to move off from this spot. I'm not entirely sure. Huh. Let's uh, move back then. Can we now grab? There we go. Are we just not allowed to? Oh, it's because. <laughs> Helps if I uh, pay attention to uh, how much stuff I've got in cargo. On that note, let's go ahead and transfer some of this cargo. So, transfer resources between ships. Let's move everything across. Don't really want any of that on board. That's something that uh, we're going to want only here and there. There we go, and everything's moved. Marvellous. Now, what is the cost to us to get the higher bridge, the, the next tier of bridge? That is going to cost us a cool 4,500. All right, well, I think we can probably make that back fairly quickly. I'm going to want you, if you're moving as a formation, I'm going to want you way back from the fight. We will now make this a custom formation. Delete that, save, and let's head on out to discover this station, something that we've had on the chore list for a while. And here we are. Let's make contact, which I believe is all we're going to need to do to complete that quest. And indeed it is. Fantastic. A little bit of payment, not a great deal. But we've got a bunch of bounties, and I should imagine that quite a lot of them will already be complete. Or perhaps not. Oh, well, there we are. There's a couple that are going to be complete. Let's grab all of them. Not at the pirate base, though. This one is explore 51% of the system. Completed that. The renegade pack bounty there good to go. Uh, we'll pick up the next exploration mission as well. Okay, well that brings us up to 6k and that is enough for us to buy the next bridge. Marvellous. Okay, let's have a look at you then. In fact, also, let's uh, tuck the Dapper 2 down here right next to all of the defensive stations. All right, in fact, we're going to need it a little bit closer because that's how we're going to build stuff at this point. I'm going to have to remember that. Right, okay, so First and foremost, the plan is to have this down there. 
Uh, I'm going to put the door in the middle. Might Well, actually having the door there makes it easier to uh, reach for the energy, so we might as well. And over here, we are then going to want the upgraded scanner, which we may actually have everything we need. Yes, we do. I am frankly amazed. Oh, okay, so that door has to be in the middle because the uh, corners are used. In that case, we are going to pop that one in the middle there. All right, make it so. Boom. There we go. Absolutely glorious. I'm going to have to make sure that the uh, energy is coming from the right spots. There we go. And you as well. But that should be everything we need, and we should see our crew jumping aboard. Now, I, unfortunately, because I've moved this around, some of our crew had to be uh, be bumped from other bunks. All right, one thing I hadn't accounted for is this actually needs a crew of four. So in total, we now need seven command crew. And if we want to leave a little bit extra for protection, then we actually want more like eight or nine just to, to cover if a crew member has to go on break for some reason. So at this stage, we might actually want two crew quarters down here and uh, have a small storage up here instead. That actually might be a better way to plan it. So let's go ahead and make that change now. And finally, after so much finagling, I feel that uh, the design here is complete. We can add a little bit more storage down here, and I guess there's no reason not to when you think about it, but uh, it's not really there for any particular purpose, so I'm not going to make it a large one. There we are. It's just a bit of extra storage. So this ship, with its mu much larger crew complement, can salvage a little bit more before it has to make a transfer. All right. Well, with that done, let's have a look at what our sensor range is going to be heading off into the next mission area. Uh, let's keep you back. In fact, I don't even need to worry about it. You move very slowly because you deplete your capacitor and then your engines stop. And it takes a little while for you to catch back up. Let's uh, have you blast ahead. Your much, much better engine array will easily allow you to pull ahead of the Dapper 2. We may change that out a little bit, possibly get an engineering section. That would require more bunks, though, but uh, it's definitely something that we can work on if we particularly want to. Right, you can stop by that sulfur asteroid, I think. Getting some uh, factories is probably going to be well worth it eventually. Now, let's have a look at you. We're just going to pop straight through and destroy your reactor, I think. That shouldn't be too hard for us to do. Though you are approaching a little bit faster than I would like, but there we are. Reactor's gone. And the bite over here. Uh, once again, just go for the reactor. The cannon should be fine. But while all that's happening, we can have the Dapper 2 head on down to start salvaging. Hopefully it doesn't draw any attention, so let's uh, give that a wide berth. I think once a ship has, has uh, gotten the attention of an enemy, they don't switch targets as far as I've seen. Anyway, they, that, that is not a usual thing. Right, you can grab everything up there, and the Dapper 2 can grab everything down here, and you're probably going to meet in the middle, and we will head on to the next bounty. At this point, we have sight on our enemies long before we can engage them, or before they even think to engage us, which is particularly nice. Uh, though we are taking a little bit more damage here than I was expecting because uh, the pirates decided that I was by far the more important threat and teamed up, even though they started fighting each other. That was rather rude of them, in my opinion. And with a quick drop-off of resources, the Dapper 2 can head on back to sit patiently at the station until we need it again. The other really nice thing about having the Dapper 2 just stationed over at a station is that I can easily hail the station by them and uh, report the completion of various bounties. That actually uh, saves me a fair bit of time and allows me to stock up on cash very, very quickly. We're, we're probably going to be taking on that base either in this episode or the next one, but uh, let's get down here. We've got a couple more uh, question marks to visit as well, but we're, we're getting there relatively quickly. Okay... If that ends up with a bunch of static uh, f structures around it, I'm going to call this one a base. But uh, let's get in a little bit closer and find out. Uh, no, it's another ship graveyard. Oh, fantastic. So many more bits. All right, let's uh, take you down if we can, please. And thank you. Is this a... It is a ship. It just wasn't really doing anything. Fair enough. It looks like uh, we've got a couple of uh, ships down here just here to collect... Uh, bits from the graveyard. I completely understand, though I do appear to have poked the hornet's nest. 
not exactly the smartest move, really, is it? Now, are you going to be able to approach a little bit too fast? You're actually being attacked whilst I'm backing up, which is great news, but uh, I'm not able to dig through... Oh, actually, you managed to take that ship out on its way. I deeply approve. I would let you go if I could somehow hail you. Can I hail you? Hello? Well, look, I tried. I tried. I was going to I was going to say, you know, sure. You help me, I help you. I'll I'll look the other way while you make your getaway. No one needs to know. But if you are absolutely set on dying. And the second drop off. Ah, so useful to have a freighter. And time for the very last drop-off, I imagine, for this uh, area, and indeed for this episode, I should uh, should think, given that I have recorded like four hours worth of content, oh my lord, and it's already <laughs> the time when I should be uploading the video. Okay, I got sucked in. I, I don't know what to say. This game is really fun, and it time just kind of bleeds away like, like grains of sand through your fingers. Uh, that is a good thing, though, I would imagine. But uh, let's go ahead and get back to this station, drop things off. I will do a final bit of uh, work down here, and then uh, we're going to be wrapping things up. I really do hope you've enjoyed today's episode, though. We've uh, actually managed to really change up the uh, dapple one we've now finally got our very own freighter in the next episode we're going to get into industry in a big way though i imagine the first thing we're going to do is we're either going to add a mining laser to the dapper 2 or make the dapper 3 which will be specifically a uh, a miner and have the Dapper 2 and the Dapper 3 tend to work together. I'm I'm feeling like wherever I've got the larger storage is where I want the industrial components, like the factories. But uh, the very, very, very last thing that we're going to do today is I'm going to have the Dapper 1 hail the station. Hello. Uh, we're going to turn in that bounty. And finally, we're going to hire the last four crew that we can hire until we get a lot more fame. We're, we're gated now by fame to getting more crew, but uh, I should imagine that the crew that we've just picked up will be able to help out a little bit down here. I am starting to notice a bit of energy inefficiency, specifically between this capacitor and the sensor array. That seems to drink power. So I'm thinking perhaps what we could do is have a little, uh, a little um, small energy reactor over here, supplying energy to both the cockpit and the sensor array and then as a, a a bit of a backup to these capacitors that might be something we do or i could try and clean things up a little bit more i really do feel with two medium reactors i shouldn't be struggling perhaps i could move these around perhaps the medium reactors could move down into the midship and i could move the bunks for the uh, weapons crew up top because that's really where they uh, do all of their work that's definitely something that we could consider but that will be for the next episode i really do hope you've all enjoyed this one and do let me know down in the comments below what you think of the dapper one and dapper two uh, again i will do uh, a bit of uh, painting work on the dapper two before the next episode begins but Thank you ever so much for joining me. I hope you had as much fun watching this as I had recording it, and I will catch you in the next episode. Take care, everyone. <laughs>